This week, three countries whose history can never be entirely forgotten by those who live there today. In Italy, I'm in the magnificent city of Venice to see how its people meet the unseen challenges of living in a city without roads. And in Turkey, I'm in the sprawling metropolis of Istanbul, where history strangely threatens life today. But first, by far the most famous coastline in the Mediterranean, which has always traded on its glamour and on its breathtaking beauty, the French Riviera. Once a region of modest fishing villages and olive groves, the British upper classes arrived here some 200 years ago and transformed it into a playground for European royalty and the super rich. From Monaco down through Nice to Cannes, this is where many of the most luxurious yachts in the world are moored in idle splendor. I'd come to Beaulieu sur Mer near Nice to board a yacht that represents the very epitome of old Riviera chic. Chief Officer Lee Wilkes was taking me out to sea. On the horizon, one of the most famous ships to have sailed the Mediterranean in the 1950s and 60s. Perhaps more than any other vessel, the Christina O has played host to some of the biggest names of the 20th century. Do you still get a sense of excitement when you come out here on the tender and approach the Christina? Basically, I'm a seafarer. I've been at sea for 25 years, and this is part of my career. When I look back in time, I'll show my young son, this is what your dad's been doing. He thinks I chase pirates. This is a classic old ship, so I'll be able to say I've worked on this. Originally built to hunt down German U-boats and to protect convoys during the Second World War, it was bought in 1954 by the Greek shipping magnate Aristotle Onassis and converted into the largest and most beautiful private yacht of its time. Well, it's very thrilling for me to be so close to the Christina. I'd, people throw roses at this. Ladies, the passion, the love involved in this. People, ladies throw roses at it. Onassis used his yacht as a center for business and politics and as a tool for brazen seduction. When you read the history about it, but it's not just the ship, the history is half of it. People are very passionate about what went on board on this. It's, there's it's a lot a of love stories. Oh, about yes. it all. There's a lot of love stories went on board here. Christina O is now used for chartered voyages. On board, I was greeted by General Manager David Jean Jean, whose job it is to cater to every whim and fancy of his well-heeled guests. Lovely day, isn't it? It's gorgeous, but I, I suppose it's always a lovely day on this boat. It is a lovely day. Where else to be? It's wonderful, isn't it? It is. Absolutely gorgeous. What a sort of dramatic backdrop here, too. It's lovely. How conscious are you in your job of the enormous history attached to this, to this ship? You need to be passionate to work on the Christina. With that passion, I think you miss things. And, and to think, you know, I'm, I'm somewhere where such all the, the big, some of the biggest names in history exactly. have had an association with this ship, with, that, this, with this yacht. That's correct. The 50s, 60s jet set, President Kennedy, uh, Greta Garbo, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, Frank Sinatra, who was playing the grand piano of Christina in 1957 in Cannes. Definitely, the, our clients are stepping back into history. Inside the ship, much remains as it did half a century ago. This was Aristotle Onassis's bedroom.
Walking through the staterooms, it's impossible to ignore the sense of quiet opulence. And everywhere, there are reminders of the shipping magnate who once owned it. This is where Onassis met his future wife, Jackie, who had come on board with her then-husband, John F. Kennedy. But for Onassis, always itching to rub shoulders with the politically famous, no guest was more eagerly pursued than Sir Winston Churchill. So all this been uh, kept the way it was over the 50s, 60s. We have an elevator leading from the this deck to the main deck. Yes. Frank Sinatra been part of the That's icon right. who came on board. But look at the what wonderful portrait of Winston Churchill. Oh, Sir Winston Churchill, indeed. He was close, close friend of Aristotle and Aziz. And, and he was here. This is a He has spent several cruises on board with Lady Clementine. It's a very, very good portrait because he didn't always like the portraits of himself. Yeah, but this sure. one, I think he'd yeah, been rather it's a lovely proud one. of. It's wonderful. Churchill was on board in 1957 when he had his first ever meeting with John F. Kennedy in this bar. So welcome into the Aris bar. This is the bar stool where Aris total analysis. But this we one, always huh? sit. No one else will sit here. Okay. And I let you sit on it. Yes, I'll please. Be, I'll Those bar stools are authentical from the time. Let me show you this, Trevor. This bar stool, he was extremely proud of it. There's only one bar in the world who is having well foreskin bar stools. And as he told Greta Garbo, uh, Greta, do you know on what you are sitting? She said, mm, no. Uh, Greta, on the biggest penis in the world. So he was extremely proud of this. She must have been impressed. The boat is no longer owned by the Onassis family, and the present owners offer the vessel for charter at a cool 400,000 pounds a week. It's the price many choose to pay to be part of Christina O's history and to be pampered to an outrageous degree. I went down below to meet Francois Audran, veteran of many a Michelin star restaurant, and now, head chef. Hello. Sir, how are you? Francois, how are nice you? Nice to meet you, sir. This is, this is your you, world. Sir. This is uh, my kingdom. You are probably one of the most important people on, the, on this yacht because you have to keep the customers really happy. I'm really happy and the guests are really demanding, as you can imagine. They always ask something which you are not, you are not expecting them to ask you kind of things like 2 o'clock in the morning. Or... Sounds a pretty stressful life. It is, it is. Well, not stress, because we, we know what we do, but pressure, yeah, a lot of pressure, because we cannot, we cannot make any mistake. We have to make the job happening, yeah. so if you're sick, even if you're sick because you're tired, or no, just carry on, carry on. The, the guests come here, they have to be satisfied, whatever happened behind. You must have some of the most expensive food in the world here. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, two years ago for a three-week charter, we had about 70,000 euros of bill only regarding the food. Money is not, not a big deal here. I never say no to the guest. I mean, this is something we just can't say. Yes, sir, no problem. That's the only answer, all time. I'm sure they're all very relieved to hear that. Thank you so much, Francois. You're very welcome, sir. So Thank you. I left Francois and his team and headed up to the bridge where Captain Zivanovich was preparing to take the Christina O out to sea. Okay, copy that. Please start giving up anchor as soon as you can. You are anchored. Okay. So, time to go. Time to go. And we are underway now. That's correct. That lovely soft purr of the engines. The glamorous jet set who were once aboard Christina O are perhaps fading memories now. 
but the delight of sailing the Mediterranean in style will never be consigned to history. I left the Christina O and the dramatic coastline of southern France and headed a thousand miles east to the birthplace, incidentally, of Aristotle Onassis, Turkey. <laughs> 